Good morning, everyone. This lecture is about grape ripening and wine style. I will share with you some results we got in Australia on sequential harvest, fruit and wine composition, and wine styles. So up to a point, this is a very integrated uh, work experimentation from the vineyard to the glass including a sensory analysis. Because the relations between variety and environment and fruit composition and the relations between fruit composition and wine composition are quite complex indeed, uh, the best to conclude an experimentation in the field is to go uh, up to wine testing or wine sensory analysis. In other words, it's not because you do something in the vineyard that you will always change fruit composition, and it's not because you will change fruit composition that you will change the wine composition and the wine style. So, as I said, wine testing and sensory analysis are needed if you want to assess if what you did in the field did impact on the wine styles. So where the Experimentations have been done in two regions of uh, Australia. One is called Orange, which is a cool temperate climate, and the other one is called Griffiths. Both are in the New South Wales. I will speak only about the results on, obtained in Griffiths, which is a warm, uh, hot climate. Why? just because I don't have time to speak about both regions within this lecture. We are busy to publish the results, so I will send you the publications when they will be edited. This is an example of vineyard in the Griffiths area of New South Wales, and you see that uh, the vineyards are under irrigation because it's a dry soil, and then the training system is a sprawling training system, meaning that the vines are not released, and then uh, all the vines are mechanically pruned. This is an example of the sprawling training system uh, around Verizon. As I already said, this training system is very clever, physiologically speaking, helping to increase the exposed leaf area and uh, allowing to have a a real good bunch microclimate. When I speak about a real good bunch microclimate, it means that because it's a warm hot area which is subjected to heat waves, this way of uh, trellising, meaning there is no uh, trellis for this training system, they don't trellis, uh, it helps to really nicely protect the, the bunches and as I said, to increase the exposed leaf area. Of course, uh, you need to control the vigor with irrigation and uh, you have to avoid a high vigorous situation uh, playing with water. You have to avoid to have a high vigor because then the, the, within the canopy, the risk is to get some uh, diseases. The distance between uh, uh, rows is three meters, allowing mechanization, obviously. So this figure is representing the evolution, the accumulation of sugar per berry and the evolution of berry fresh mass of 100 berries and this is the dot line. The red dot line represents when the plateau of sugar accumulation has been reached according to our model. I already spoke about this model to you uh, within the previous lectures. And then according to this model, which is a certain number of days uh, after the plateau of sugar accumulation to decide when to harvest, we decided to do two harvest dates for the Shiraz. The first harvest date, according to the model, is 12 days after the plateau of sugar accumulation, which is H1, and the second date is around 24 days after the plateau of sugar accumulation, which is here, H2. You will observe that uh, because of uh, irrigation, it was possible in this situation to maintain the volume of the fruit quite stable, 
obviously you have uh, certain variability uh, because we work with the population of berries and that is explaining because the sugar is no more accumulated and the volume of the berry is quite stable this is explaining why uh, between the first harvest date and the second harvest dates uh, the bricks increase the concentration of sugar is not increasing that much and you will see that irrespective of sugar concentration the evolution of aromas and, and phenols continue so according to our model that I don't really have time to explain everything here but the first harvest date for Shiraz is called fresh fruit and the second harvest date according to the model is called mature fruit so practically speaking uh, immediately you will see that with this model you are able to predict up to a point the harvest dates uh, according if you want to harvest fresh fruit or metal fruit the prediction is from the plateau of sugar accumulation on the berry population some results we are busy with these methods and we are not the only uh, since more than 15 years and each time we do harvest irrespective of the variety each each time we do harvest fresh or metal fruit or both because you can blend a panel using some sensory analysis is always able to differentiate the two uh, wine styles and here i forgot to tell you that we have been working over three vintages as well and this uh, i do represent here the results from 2014 and 2015 only so these uh, aromatic sequences I mean fresh and mature fruit is irrespective of the terroir is irrespective of climate it's irrespective of the soil it's irrespective of the cultural practices for a variety you will always have those stages fresh and mature fruit now depending on the variety the date to get from the plateau of sugar accumulation uh, depending on the variety the number of days will differ from the plateau of sugar accumulation as i said for example for Shiraz, merlot pinot noir the fresh fruit stages will be reached around 10 to 12 days after the plateau of sugar accumulation mature fruit will be reached 24 days around 20 24 days after the plateau of sugar accumulation and for varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon Carmenere Cabernet Franc etc the plateau will be the, the fresh fruit stages will be reached around 20 days after the plateau of sugar accumulation and 30 to 40 days for mature fruit and then it's important to understand that to get those stages uh, the window to harvest is very short it's generally between three to five days so you don't have to miss this aromatic window if you miss the aromatic windows you uh, move from one aromatic window to another so let's look now at results at the fresh and metal fruit stages let's look at results on Chinois and Cabernet Sauvignon Cabernet Sauvignon for the presentation here is a bonus so the first stages here is fresh fruit in blue you have Shiraz in red the Cabernet Sauvignon and this is the sensory impact reported on the aromatized wine meaning that it's the threshold of detection for this C6 compounds uh, yeah the threshold of detection for a panel the C6 compounds like hexanol etc are responsible of herbaceous grassy fresh aromas fresh aromas or herbaceous aromas in a wine does not mean that uh, you have green characteristics uh, uh, like pyrazine it's it's a freshness it's about freshness and then you see that fresh fruit for shiraz fresh fruit uh, express a lot of c6 compounds why it's not the case for Cabernet Sauvignon and you see that for these uh, compounds 
mature fruit, uh, this compound is decreasing for Shiraz from fresh to mature fruit. And still for Cabernet Sauvignon, you don't have a lot of these compounds. And anyway, the concentration is below the sensory impact. Same for, Sh for Shiraz at mature fruit, the concentration is below the sensory impact. So it means that for Shiraz, if you want to get wines with fresh fruit aromas, you need really to harvest within a precise window. And this is why we use this model of berry sugar accumulation to predict the harvest date and to reach the right window uh, for uh, harvesting at the right aromatic period. This uh, aromatic evolution is a reality, it's a genetic reality, and obviously the site, the climate, the soil, etc., will impact on the concentration of those compounds, but you will always have the sequence irrespective of everything. What an exciting talk, isn't it? Ah, yes, I just have 15 minutes. Now let's look at another compound, aromatic compound, which is a GMS, which is a marker of late maturity of uh, mature fruit stages and which is expressed irrespective of the cultivar. So same presentation, you have here the threshold of detection. Here you have fresh fruit in blue Shiraz, in red Cabernet Sauvignon. And here you have mature fruit with Shiraz and Cabernet Sauvignon. So we do observe that irrespective, that irrespective of the variety, this compound is present in the wine and is increasing from fresh fruit to mature fruit. And for both varieties. And we do observe that this compound is more important in Cabernet Sauvignon than in Shiraz. So practically speaking, it's interesting because it means that if you want to have a fruity Shiraz, perhaps it's better to target mature fruit. Metro fruit, which is for Shiraz around 20-24 days after the plateau of sugar accumulation. Now for Cabernet Sauvignon, you already have a fruity wine, which is not too herbaceous, and I'm not speaking about pyrazine here, which is another story, but you already have a fresh fruit. At the fresh fruit stages for Cabernet Sauvignon, you already have wines which will be fruity and not such herbaceous, or not too herbaceous, sorry. And you will be surprised to know that in most wine regions in the world, including Bordeaux, the Cabernet Sauvignon is harvested at the fresh fruit stages or a bit after because it's quite difficult to reach the mature fruit stages. Why? Because as I said, the fresh fruit stages for Cabernet Sauvignon is reached 20 days after the plateau of sugar accumulation and for mature fruit it will be reached uh, 40 days, around 40 days after uh, the plateau of sugar accumulation. And to reach the plateau of sugar accumulation, it will take, as an average, 25 days to 30 days. So if you look at the duration to reach the plateau of sugar accumulation, let's say 30, uh, 20, uh, 30 days, yes, plus the, the, the 20 days to reach the fresh fruit stages, it's already 50 days. And this is explaining why uh, for those varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, a lot of vineyard they are harvesting fresh fruit stages. Fresh fruit stages is just a denomination because we had to give a name, but you can call it uh, whatever you want, but we need to put names on, on things if we want to, to speak the same languages. And you see that I forgot to tell you, but it's right and on the slide, the DMS is responsible of dark fruit, chewy fruit, truffle in the wine. And don't forget that DMS is revealed during aging as well, which is making the story of DMS complex. There is a PhD in Bordeaux on DMS and they start to show uh, as to be confirmed that DMS could be released by tannins during the aging process, to be confirmed. To go further with this uh, approach, we did some metabolomics uh, analysis and 
why this method is strong and this is really a, a strong model and there is no more uh, a lot of discussion around it it's because normally when we speak about uh, analyzing compounds uh, while harvesting uh, we speak about just a few compounds <clears throat> here we did a metabolomics uh, approach which was targeted and untargeted and you see that during ripening and after the plateau of sugar accumulation the harvest date fresh fruit and the harvest dates uh, metal fruit do correspond to hundreds of compounds which are expressed for most of them specifically at those stages so i will give you the i will provide you with the publication but this figure is not really readable and we cannot read the name of the compounds but this is what uh, omics uh, representation and figures uh, is about so you have to trust me first and then uh, to read the publications on the on the topic so to summarize significant modification of 175 wine volatiles uh, according to the harvest dates were showed irrespective of the vineyard management within the same macroclimate which means that you have really uh, an evolution of the aromas uh, irrespective of the, the site the the terroir let's say up to our knowledge today that it's genetics the wine polyphenols were less influenced by the harvest date and obviously uh, sensory analysis is able to uh, recognize the two stages about polyphenols we always speak about tannin and anthocyanins but with omics approach metabolomics approach <laughs> we, we are able to detect more than in this case we detected uh, 53 uh, polyphenols and they are not really uh, influenced by the harvest dates uh, surprising is not it so I cannot get rid of this uh, rectangle where uh, I do pause and I do register uh, uh, irrespective of what you asked uh, I don't know how to get rid of that so uh, anyway you will have the PowerPoint presentation on side and then I will uh, provide you with publications so to summarize about polyphenol, it seems that sites and vineyard management uh, are more important uh, influencing polyphenol, uh, wine polyphenol, than uh, other dates. The related publication, we did something on polyphenols in South Africa as well. I will send you a few publications on that. Uh, it's about the effect of uh, abiotic factors, water, light, and temperature on polyphenols. Uh, those abiotic factors are more important on polyphenols than uh, other dates uh, of, of, obviously <laughs> they are important for aromas as well but for aromas the other dates is crucial so from a single vineyard it's possible to produce with consistency because you can predict with the model different wine styles using the berry sugar uh, loading methods uh, allowing sequential harvest and even you can blend fresh and metal fruit wines if you want to get more complexity in the wine where you will associate both stages and as i said there is no clear nexus between berry sugar concentration so bricks and flavors uh, from when sugar per berry accumulation plateaus or slows down this is very important to uh, understand because harvesting according to alcohol to bricks it's just harvesting according to a sugar to a concentration of sugar it's not harvesting according to phenols and aromas that's something you need to keep in mind it's important the tree the dream team <coughs> when i was in uh, australia uh, with my fantastic colleagues and the metabolomic approach uh, approaches have been done in italy we have been working in uh, Australia with uh, uh, De Bortoli, Mac Williams, Philippe Shaw, Cumulus Winery, there are big wineries in New South Wales. And uh, these uh, studies have been funded by the Australian government, by the Australian Grape and Wine Authority. So thank you very much for your attention. You will have on this slide my, uh, the address, the link with my professional websites, website, yeah and where you will find uh, a lot of publications, uh, practical publication or scientific publications. Keep well, bye.